Hi and welcome to RC Nerd 74. In today's tutorial, I show you how to build custom ND filters for your Cadix Tarsier FPV 4K camera. First of all, I have to say that I love this camera for using in micro quads like this 3 inch quad from GPRC, it's a Signet CX3. The camera delivers nice uh, 4K footage at 30 frames per second and at the same time with the lower lens you get low latency FPV footage in really good colors and the whole system works absolutely perfect. There's only one little downside on this camera, these are the ND filters. Stock filter is only one filter you can get and this is the ND8 filter. Usually you get ND4 to ND32 filters. This filter is just a solution somewhere in the middle. So you can use it a bit for every situation. But if you want the perfect picture, you want the perfect motion blur in every light situation, you need the whole range from ND4 to ND32 filters. There are also a few other downsides on the stock filter. One is that it's made of really thin glass. So in case of crashes, these glasses break super easy and you have to replace these filters pretty often. Another downside is the ND filter coating is on the inside of the filter. If you put your filter onto your camera, the coating gets scratched by the camera lens which touches the coating. After a few flights you will get bright little white point in the middle of the filter and this gives you a bright area in the middle of your flight footage which looks pretty bad. And the last downside is that this filter also covers your FPV camera which is absolutely not necessary because no one needs motion blur or anything similar on the FPV footage. The thing you use on the FPV footage is the maximum light uh, you can get on this lens to get the best and quickest live picture and the sharpest live picture you can get to see all the obstacles coming. So I decided to work on a custom filter. This is the final result. It's a pretty simple solution and I'm going to show you now the steps how you can make these filters. And as you can see, it's simply to put it on, just stuck it on your HD lens and push the filter back and it sits perfectly. It looks like the lens gets into your FPV footage, but I will show you later on some footage that it doesn't affect your FPV footage. You have clear FPV picture and at the same time you have perfectly filtered the sunlight to the perfect amount of light to get nice motion blur. To build one of these filters, you only need a few things. One is an uh, aluminium tube which has an inner diameter of exactly 10 millimeters. The lens is almost 10 millimeters so it fits absolutely perfect. It also stucks by itself on your lens. You don't need to fix it additional. If you want to do an additional mount, you can use some tape and put it on top of the camera and over the top of the filter just to give it some additional strength to not get off the lens in case of a crash. The lens itself, you can make it out of some old sunglasses you don't need anymore. If you have scratches or something on your sunglasses and you cannot use them anymore as actual sunglasses, you can cut out these plastic glasses and use them as your filter glass or you can order some real ND filter plastic glasses at AliExpress or similar online shops which are super cheap. They are around one or two dollar each sheet so you can get the range from ND4 to ND32 for a few dollars. Then you also need some paint to paint it black especially on the inside to avoid any reflections of the sunlight 
back to your glass from the inside and a glue or plastic liquid tape to mount the glass onto your aluminium tube. So the first step is that you have to cut down your aluminium tube to the right length. It's about uh, 8 millimeters. It's important that you have left some space between your lens, uh, the front end of your lens and the glass of the filter that the filter doesn't touch the lens so you cannot get any scratches onto your filter lens and also on your camera lens. Then there is a little challenge because you have such a tiny gap between the two lenses it's just a few tenths of a millimeter so you have to sand down the lower part of your tube down to only two tenths or something of a millimeter you have to try out when it fits and the best what you can do is to sand it down only that it just fits between the lenses so it sits better between the lenses and keeps the filter in position to avoid losing the filter in case of crashes. Next step is to cut down your glass to the right size. I highly recommend that you cover both sides of the glass with some tape just to avoid scratches during the cutting and sanding of the glass. So you have a really clean glass after all the work on the glass and no scratches which affect your FPV footage. And if you sanded it down to the right shape, I prefer a shape that is a little bit bigger than the aluminum tube, just because it's easier to glue it onto your tube because there is more surface to glue these two parts together. The best experience I had is with plastic dip liquid tape just because it's removable so if you did something wrong putting these two parts together or you have used too much of plastic dip liquid tape just take apart the two parts clean both put it back together you are not in trouble like if you do the same with glue which cannot be removed if you have it on the glass of your lens and this is already the final result how it can look it's your decision if you paint it in black or you leave it in silver or whatever. The only thing I highly recommend as already mentioned is to put some black color on the inside. Just a really really thin layer because it won't fit anymore on the lens if you have too much paint on the inside. Really thin layer only on the front part of the inner side of the tube. Like this you will have almost no reflections from the sunlight flying directly into the sun. This is already all about this tutorial. Now let's jump into some test flight footage. I flew one pack with the custom made filter, one pack with the stock ND8 filter and one pack without any filter. You can see pretty good the differences between the amount of motion blur you get on the same daylight with the different filters or without filter. To get a stable amount of motion blur, there are only two settings you have to do on your Caddx Tars here. One is to fix your white balance to daylight and to fix your ISO to 100. Like this you always get the same shutter speed, so you will have an even amount of motion blur in your footage. So thanks for watching. Have a good time, happy flying, bye bye.